Hello, my name is Paul Wood. I am the Interim Director of Ministries in the Connectional Team for the Methodist Church. You should have already watched the video Calling, Discernment and Vocation, and now we're going to consider together, how do I know if I've heard a call from God? I want to state right at the very beginning that I'm really excited that you are thinking about ordained ministry and what that might mean. And we have to say that knowing that we've got a call from God is not an exact science. That's why we use discernment. We try and understand as a church, have you got that calling? And likewise, you as an individual will be asking yourself, is God really wanting me to do this? I want to suggest from the very beginning that um, a call is something that's very much rooted in our scriptures. It's biblical. God has always called his people, called his people to follow and called his people to lead. So for a moment, I'm going to invite you to um, stop this video and to think for a moment about the characters in the Bible that you can think had a calling. And I want you to note just at the side of the names, what do you notice about their calling? What might it be saying to you? Why you do so? I'll just stop my video. When we look at these things with hindsight, it's easy to see how the characters in the Bible had a calling from God, even if at the time they were very unaware of it. Here's a few that I came up with. Think about Moses, saved at birth for a purpose, to lead his people into freedom. Ruth finding herself in a situation where she could do no other but care for Naomi. Think of the call of David, the least expected in his family to take up any leadership role. After all, it was the youngest, needing Samuel's anointing so that others, and maybe himself, might recognise that he was called. Think of Lydia in the book of Acts. She recognised that she could introduce people to God and she desired no other than to be faithful to God. And so she used what she had been given. Even Jesus needed the baptism of John and the voice of God. This is my son to propel him to go into the next part of his life of what God was calling him to do. It is the belief of the church that all are called. Christ has many services to be done. You'll have heard this phrase each year in our covenant service. There are a huge variety of vocations. We'll have all have met people who seem to be in the right place at the right time. Before I came into ministry, I was a teacher in an infant school. There were many a dinner lady who I knew were just in the right place at the right time. They cared for the children. They loved them with a passion. They got paid hardly anything for doing it. And yet they knew their role. Likewise, I worked with a head teacher who was inspirational. She'd worked in the same school for many years as a classroom teacher and eventually was promoted to head teacher. She just was there and knew the place and the people and it was right time right place. If anyone was called, she was. The notion of calling, therefore, is not unusual in our society, but sometimes it seems a bit weird when we start to suggest it might come from God. Secular science society or people just around conversation might just say, well, I just decided to do it, or I've always wanted to do something in this way, or I just felt that that's what I've got to do. Maybe here's the tension between I just decided, or I wanted to do it, and a prompt from God. And it's something as a church and as disciples we need to be careful of. 
as a church, we believe that all people are created by God and in some way or other are called by him into faith, called by him into discipleship. And in life are called then to serve. We're all called to a life in all its fullness, the notion of Christian perfection. So how do we know if we are called by God? If only we had a voice from above. But it's never been that easy when we've considered calling. Here on this slide, we see the, the essence of a model presented to us by Dolich, Cairo and Rhinesmith. Here, their model is lined up and describes how leadership might operate. But I want to suggest that this model might help us understand discernment too. At the very basic point of the model is something around head, gut and heart. Recognising that some decisions come from our head, some come from our heart and some come from our gut. The discernment process I want to suggest is trying to work out whether God is nudging us to line all three of these parts up. Let me tell you a bit of my own discernment story. When I felt called to be a presbyter in the Methodist Church, I knew in my gut that I needed to candidate. I don't know how, I don't know why, it's just how it was. I needed to do it, that's what God wanted from me, a gut decision. In my heart, I didn't really want to do it. I loved the job that I was doing and I felt that that was a place I could serve God. In my mind, well, if I'm honest, I don't think I would. I thought I was clever enough to do it. And it just took a while for God to do that nudging to help me line all three up, to understand that I could serve him. And indeed, this Derbyshire lad could be called to serve and to lead the people in the church that I might be sent to serve. It meant giving some things up that I really loved doing, but it also meant that I could take on some really exciting things and new things for God. There will be lots of stories about how things line up or be knocked into place by God, nudged along that um, he might use us in different ways. I want to take us now then to a biblical uh, example. Let's think again back to Moses. I reckon Moses knew in his heart that the people of Egypt or the people living in Egypt, his people, needed to get away from Egypt. They were being badly treated and, and life had not been good for them for many years. In his heart, he knew that. In his guts, well, he probably felt really nervous. Going away from the security of slavery, of all that many people had grown up in. In his head, he wasn't sure if he was able to do this at all, as he described himself as being slow of speech. But eventually, God nudges all three parts into line. So I want you to consider your calling. Do you recognise any of this? Something going on in your head, maybe? Something in your heart? or something deep down in your gut. Discernment and trying to understand if you have got a call from God is a process that's something coming um, that relies on prayer and requires us to connect with God to try and work out what's going on in heart, mind and gut. And if they all line up, it's probable that you are being called by God. So I want to encourage you to ask yourself these questions. 
are you the right person to represent the Methodist people, and of course God, in the 21st century? Can you speak of God's love in a way that enables the word to be heard in this generation? Have you the capacity to learn, to challenge, to enable change? And are you ready to give of yourself fully to this work? I'm guessing at some point or other, the answer to some of these questions might well be no. And I want to then refer you back to those biblical characters. Very few of them said yes straight away. It took them a while to work out what they should be doing and the way that they should go. The candidating process is really a journey of finding out more about yourself and more about God. There's no doubt that God is calling you. It's the duty and delight of every Christian disciple to work out what that calling is actually to. The call for each of us is to use our life in all its fullness to enable others to recognise God too. Maybe you can find life in all its fullness by offering yourself to the church to candidate in ordained ministry. Or maybe that's not your call. Either way, you can be sure that the church is praying for you as you take this journey of vocation. And you can be assured that as you try and work out what's going on in your head, what's going on in your heart, what might be going on in your guts, that we will be praying for you too. Go well, in Jesus' name.